I know we have a couple of people who have called in, um, meaning you're using your phone and not looking at a computer monitor. So if that's one of you, um, don't worry, we are recording this, so you can actually view on your computer afterwards. Um, it's going to be posted on events.bbbcommunity.org, or for those of you who want to review it later, um, it's going to be posted on there um, for you to review as well, and I can send you a link afterwards. Um, my name is Faustine Chan. I am the business innovation manager for BBB, so um, I'm helping coordinate all these webinars daily um, with different themes, so you can join us. Um, just to help your business um, right now. So today is um, Wednesday Wellness, so we're going to understand um, the emotional impact of COVID-19 crisis. Um, we have a great speaker from the Peak Fleek. Um, he's the co-founder and principal at that company. Um, Brian Stinson, who's an engineer, entrepreneur, father, and athlete with more than 20 years experience building high-performing teams and driving culture change. He combines the science of data and analytics with the power of empathy and relationships to solve problems. Um, so I'll go ahead and give the floor to you, Brian. Thank you, Faustine. I appreciate the, the very nice introduction. Uh, this is Brian, and uh, I'll introduce myself and the Peak Fleet and my partner, who's also on the line today in a moment. I just want to say that it's, it's probably an understatement that we're going through a situation you know, that none of us have ever experienced, you know, nothing like this uh, ever. Uh, and what we know is that there's been a lot of focus on the physical and the physiological health of, of everybody and to stay safe. But if you're like me, so far, I haven't, I haven't caught the virus, I'm, I'm healthy, but the situation has absolutely affected me, phys uh, excuse me, emotionally. And so that's, um, that's really what, what triggered um, this to, to um, you know, the webinar today, what the backstory was that it was something that was really bothering me. I didn't really understand what it was. I began to sort of self-reflect, uh, do some journaling. The journaling turned into a blog. The blog has since triggered a, a video series. And then the, the, the awesome folks at the BBB reached out and said, hey, uh, really liked um, what you wrote. It really helped us process kind of what we were feeling. Could you please come and do a webinar? So that's that's where we're at today, and it was uh, it was absolutely a no question for us because that's that's what we want to do is help get back in this in this uh, during this crisis. In terms of what how we do what we do today, hang on one second. My clicker is now out of sync. Shoot, hang on one second. I'm going to take it off. I have been having some PowerPoint challenges. So let's do this. Please bear with me. So if any time anyone has questions for Brian, we will go ahead and answer those at the end of the webinar. And um, we do have some interactive activities throughout the webinar as well, but just type in the questions that you have either in the chat option or the Q&A box. Thank you for that. So yes, uh, I, I time this out. There's about 45 minutes of content. I'm going to go quickly through sections of it so that we do have time at the end for, for question and dialogue. Uh, what I want to say is the workshops that we do at the Peak Fleet are, are built on a formula of three things. One, we do want you to learn. Absolutely. We try to also create a, sh a shared experience where you leave with a common vocabulary, but we're also, most importantly, we want to make sure you leave with an action plan. And that's how we designed the discussion today that you you will learn about core values, um, and regardless of your understanding or experience with core values, I hope that you're, you will gain something um, from that part of it. We will further understand how values affect emotions, emotions of ourselves, emotions of others. And not only will we gain insight today, and, and I'll try to provide you some techniques for, for navigating through this time and, and maintaining a healthy emotional state, um, but we're gonna actually talk about what you will do as a result of, of today. So here's Jen and I, since we're not on video, I thought I'd show you uh, what we look like. Jen's based in Portland, Oregon. I'm in Chandler, Arizona. Jen and I worked together at a high tech company for, for 20 plus years and we, we launched the Peak Fleet in uh, 2016. To, uh, to really go change the world of work, the company was founded on four values, persistence, empathy, authenticity, and kindness. Um, so that's, that's really the basis of, of our company, our belief, 
and it's uh, it's baked into the approach that we take with all of our offerings. We, we like to say that we're in the business of creating irresistible workplaces, and we create irresistible workplaces through workshops, coaching, consulting, um, leadership events and retreats. So there's always some aspect of, of values that are incorporated into what we do and how we do it. Moving on to, there we go. What part of, part of the framework today is based on one of our workshops around healthy conflict. We, this workshop um, is, is framed around six steps. So understanding that there is conflict, allowing for emotions, uh, really then practicing authentic and kind confrontation, but also understanding the reasons for, for the conflict in the first place. And, and then having an appropriate uh, response, which is based on understanding of what your natural response is. So I threw this slide in today because what we're going to do, uh, we're really gonna focus on steps one, two, and four. So we're gonna recognize, acknowledge that there is a conflict. Uh, we're gonna understand the emotional uh, kind of connection to that, understand the, the, root, the root causes, the reasons, and then talk about our approach to navigate through it. So I wanted to make this a little bit interactive, at least as much as possible. Uh, this, is a, this is absolutely a fan favorite in, in the workshop that I just referenced. I'm going to flash up an emoji, and I would like you, using the chat window, to guess what emotion this, this emoji represents. So we'll start with, with this one, and Faustine will read out the, your responses as we go. And when I hear the answer, I'll move on to the next one. Laughter, laughing, um, hilarity. Close. It's amusement. Yeah. So we'll go on, we're gonna go rapid fire here because there's nine of them. What's this one? Anger. Yes, you got anger. And next? Tired, sleepy, boring. Boring, yes, boredom. Hopefully no one's bored for the next 45 minutes. Uh, how about this? Uncertain, disappointed, confused. Mm -hmm. Confused, good, you guys are good, nailing it. Next. Snorting mad, <laughs> frustrated, <laughs> pissed, miffed. How about disgusted? And hopefully there's a few of these emotions today. Ex happy, excitement. happiness. Very happy. I almost ruined it by saying, I hope you're excited to come to the webinar today. How about? How about this one? Ponderous, <laughs> curious, thinking. Very close. Interest. Next. This should be easy. Sad. Yep. Very good. And finally. Content. Content. Believed. Close enough. How about satisfaction? So it, turn, it turns out that we used to think there were about six emotions. Uh, somebody did some research fairly recently, and it turns out that there's actually 27 in this. We couldn't quite fit 27 emojis. Plus, we couldn't quite uh, associate 27 different emojis. But someone figured out that there's 27 different emotions. Um, so here, here they are on one page. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but I wanted, I thought that would not only be a fun way to kind of get, get some interaction going, but also just realize that uh, there are a lot of different human emotions. And so this, this really brings us to step one. I'm, I'm assuming that uh, the reason why you're here today is there has been some kind of emotion triggered through this crisis. Um, and I'm wondering if one of the words on this slide resonates with you as like, oh, that's the thing that I've been feeling. And, and really the important, the important aspect of this is the fact that once we can put a label on something, once we can identify it, then we can tackle it. So I'll give you one more second just to look this over and see if there's something that's really, that's really been kind of brewing inside of you. What we normally do at this part of the process is we actually take a little bit of time and do a mindfulness exercise. I'm not sure exactly how that would work on the webinar, but what I do want you to do is close your eyes for just a few seconds and think about the emotion on one of the previous two slides that, that you are now kind of really in tune with, with that's the emotion that you've been feeling. That's the emotion that's been sort of bothering you over the last few weeks. 
just kind of be with that emotion for a moment. Give it some time. Breathe in, breathe out. And then we will continue forward. And really the point is before, before we move into the discussion around values, I just, I wanted to really create some, some mindfulness, some awareness of the fact that there, there, is, there is something going on inside of us. It's, it starts with being, being aware of it. And so it's this idea that uh, only once we're aware of something, that's when we can create change. So now that you've been grounded into this emotion that you've been feeling and, and you'd like to help process, let's continue moving forward. So let's talk about values. And I have no idea, we spend, Jen and I spend a lot of time dealing with values. We've, uh, we've actually run uh, hundreds or thousands of people through an exercise to identify their core values. So there's, there's a lot of work we do here. Um, I bet some of the folks on the phone have done the exercise, maybe even with us. Uh, and maybe others, this is a new concept. So the, the first thing that I want to say about core values is that we all have them and there are no right or wrong answers. But having clarity about what is most important to you allows you to make better decisions more quickly. Um, you know, and when it comes to values, there are hundreds of values. There's hundreds of good values. Uh, and it's, it's really not, it's not really about good or bad. It's about what is most important to you because if you, if you really think about, if you look at all of these values and all of the things out there, and if you said they were all important, then if, if everything's important, then nothing's really important. So it's so having some clarity about what is most important to you uh, really helps you navigate through uh, decisions and times of change. In a group, which is where we do a lot of our work, is when we can create understanding of each other's values, that's where the magic happens. And so having an understanding not only of your own values, but the values of others, um, both similar as well as different. You, we have better communication, better trust, better, better healthy conflict. Um, just a lot, a lot of good things happen at that point. And then really sort of the good, better, best in teams or in organizations that, um, you know, starting with clarity about your individual values, having clarity and transparency about the values of others uh, to go to the next step, creating a shared version of values or organizational values cultural values, uh, that's, uh, that's where you start to really develop a lot of cohesion and opportunity to have alignment for a larger group. I'm gonna move forward here. Okay, so before we talk too much about specific values, I thought I would clarify a couple of things. There are some values, when we look at the list of values, or if we were to go through the deck of cards that that we have, there are some values that also read as a strength. Uh, we're huge fans of strengths finder, strengths based development. A strength is something that you're good at, it's a talent. You practice it, you get better at it, it makes you efficient, you're able to accomplish tasks more effectively, but they don't drive your decisions or your behaviors. Values do, and values drive your decisions, your actions, your behaviors. They, they play into your emotions, regardless of, wh of whether or not you're good at them or not. So there's, there's probably a Venn diagram, but there's, there are some that might be both, but we're really gonna focus today on values as the things that are most important to us, the things that, that influence our decisions or behaviors, and specifically today, the, the values that, that trigger our emotional reaction. Uh, one more clarification, there are different types of values. There are uh, just one clarification today, core values versus aspirational values. Both are important. Core values are important to you and your behaviors, your actions are aligned. An aspirational value is something that's important to you, but maybe your behaviors aren't quite aligned at the moment. So there's something you aspire to have more of in your life, possibly. I hope that makes sense. So what are your core values? Uh, again, I don't, uh, I don't pretend to know exactly um, the kind of the distribution of, of understanding or clarity about values on, you know, from the audience. There are multiple ways of identifying your core values. The way that we do it, we use a deck of cards. Uh, we go through a card sort process. We start with 55 values and we get down to uh, a final six. And so this is uh, an example. These are my values uh, with open-mindedness being on top, humility, fairness, wellness, family, independence. So these are the six things that are most important to me. They absolutely play into my decisions and my actions. 
uh, and and the the feeling and the emotional state that I've sort of processed through the last few weeks absolutely relate back to these things. I just wanted to give you a grounding when I say core values, this is one way of, of getting to the clarity of what's most important to you. There are also lists of values out there that you can look through um, and kind of do the same process of, of whittling it down to a, a top six, a top five, a top 10, you know, some, some kind of process elimination to identify what is most important. So the question we get a lot is, do they change? And in general, core values don't change uh, kind of near term. Over the, over the span of your life, usually with some kind of major life event, starting a career, changing a career, um, getting married, getting divorced, having children, experiencing death, there, these are things that absolutely impact us. And so when we go through some kind of life event, values absolutely change. And I think it's fair to say that right now, we are all going through a life event. And I think that's at the root of, of sort of what's happening emotionally to a lot of us, is that uh, it's, it's basically causing either a reset, a change, or some kind of misalignment, or our values are being tested. I'm going to keep Do they change? Just keep going. Okay, so here are three values, security, wellness, family. Regardless if these were part of your top six, if these were your core values before the current crisis occurred, it's, it's likely that, you know, likely they were important to you, but maybe they weren't the top six. But what we're going through right now, I absolutely believe these are things that have become really important to all of us, or at least most of us. So being, having security, you know, being free from danger, ha having physical, mental wellness, everybody's hunkering down with their family. So these are things, um, re really, I think the first observation is it's very likely that your values may have changed in terms of these things, again, regardless of where they were before, have raised in terms of their importance. And so going, just having your values change on you it is something that you have to take some time to kind of process through. Now, at the same time, you might have values like accomplishment, adventure, fun, that are absolutely legit values, um, but kind of, through the lens of what we're experiencing right now, maybe they don't seem quite as important, or maybe, um, you know, maybe they seem kind of trivial. So it's that, again, that change in values is something you're gonna need some time um, to process. Now, another example, we were, Jen and I were having a discussion that um, somebody whose value was security and wellness may have reacted to of the news of the outbreak and what do we need to do prepare, to prepare where somebody who traditionally has a very strong sense of adventure and adventure is very important to them, they, they may not, let's say, take the warnings or the advice quite as seriously or they may not react quite as quickly, which then if we weren't able to expose and see that it was really about the value of security versus adventure and that there's a difference there, that person might appear to be reckless or uh, not taking it seriously, but in reality, maybe it's just a sense of, uh, of adventure that's they're, they're looking at this from a little different perspective. So they, but, but I think the very first thing we want to understand is how our values change as a result of the crisis we're going through. So it's, it is, it's really, it's times like this that can be very revealing about what is most important. So even if you're not sure, this is a great time to take stock once again of, of what is most important to you. Okay, so the next question is, regardless if they've changed or not, um, the values that you do have, are they being tested right now? So the first thing that came to my mind was logic. Uh, and, and logic wasn't one of my core values, if you remember from the picture, but it is, I'm an engineer, I'm very logical, logic is very important to me, it, it is something I respect. Um, and I know this was playing into some of my frustration because I, I think I was being logical about the wrong things. I was being very logical that there weren't very many cases of, of COVID-19 being reported. And so therefore, my perception was that the behavior of others was irrational, that they were overreacting. Uh, and I really, when I 
when I kind of leveraged my, my empathy strength, if you will, I really started to think about, wait a minute, maybe they are being very, very logical, but they're being logical about different set of facts. So really, the, when, it, when I really kind of processed through this, I was probably fixated on the wrong data. I was fixated on number of cases when really it was about flattening the curve and, and kind of if you look at the whole system, the, the major constraint in the system is number of respirators. And so we don't have enough. Uh, so I think for me, processing, it wasn't even just about being logical or not. It was making sure that I understood what, what my logic was based on and what the logic was of others. Because until I did that, until I had some empathy or some understanding uh, and perspective taking of others, I just sort of judged the behavior of others as something that wasn't logical. So continuing forward. Tradition. Tradition is another value that very likely is being tested right now. If you are a creature of habit, or maybe you even have a birthday or some kind of big celebration that's been impacted, canceled, it's, it's been changed because of what we're, what we're dealing with. Uh, that's, that can be very testing, very, very traumatic. Um, but then when it does come to habits and routines, if you, if you are a, a person of, of, of habit, of routine, and having to change or adapt to a new one, uh, that's challenging. I know for me, uh, there is one particular routine that was very important to me, although I think it's much more about well, my wellness core value than tradition. Uh, I really, really enjoy going to Orange Theory Fitness, and my routine was to do it every morning, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., and, and that routine has been disrupted, and that really bothered me, but I, again, I think it was more about the wellness than the tradition. But I also have a lot of empathy for folks who are having to learn a brand new routine right now. So for, for me, uh, I've, you know, most of us are, almost all of us are now, if we're not essential, we're working from home. And that's, for many, that's a, that's a brand new routine. It's something for me I've been doing for, for years now. And so I'm, it's not really a new routine for me, but, but boy, I have a lot of empathy for folks who are doing it for the very first time and maybe even having to do that at the same time homeschooling or taking care of young children. So that's something where we wanna practice our, our empathy. Another area where you might be tested is around, I'm really struggling to get this, wealth. Uh, and there's a lot of things that are happening here. This is a very kind of obvious uh, test, if you will. Oh, before I go on, when it comes to logic, I wanna also give you a few tips of if, if this resonates with you of something that's, that's off for you. When it comes to logic, what I was trying to explain is if you feel like that's being tested, I would really practice seeking to understand and thinking about what, what logic or what data the other person might be, might be thinking about or using. Uh, when it comes to tradition, you might want to just try and think of new way, either new ways of doing, uh, creating new traditions, new routines, or figuring out virtual ways to, to exercise a similar version of your, of your old routine. Uh, when it comes to wealth, there's a lot of things that are, that are very scary right now. There are, there are businesses that are at risk of going bankrupt, shutting down. There are, there are folks whose hours, income that have been reduced, maybe uh, out of work completely. There's the, the sort of the obvious, you know, what the market is doing right now. Um, that's scary. That's unsettling. I think my, my advice here would be to just focus on what you do have control over. You know, for instance, we can't really control the stock market. So I think just, you know, not, not letting that bother you and just realizing that, that uh, again, things will come back eventually. Um, the other comment about wealth is while we're talking about money, we're talking about financial wellness, there are gold bars on the picture, there are different types of wealth. So this would be a very good time to think about uh, wealth of resources, wealth of family, wealth of, of things in, in different, different currency than just money or finances, uh, and taking stock of where we have wealth in other areas. The next area that might be tested is if you are, I don't know if you've seen the meme that says, hey, introverts, check on your extrovert, extroverted friends. They're, they're struggling right now. Um, if you're someone who really thrives working with others, working with your, your team, 
or maybe you're just simply missing having adult interaction with friends and family. Um, these, so collaboration community absolutely uh, is getting tested right now. If you are feeling alone or isolated, or even if you're not, uh, this is a real, real concern. And I think you know, where, what I look at in terms of a suggestion is there are ways of using technology to, to regain some of these same experiences around collaboration and community. Uh, there's, an, there's an app that uh, I hadn't heard of before this that now seems to be front and center, House Party. There's people using uh, Zoom for, for social activities. I think it's, uh, I love the innovation and the adoption of technology to, to continue kind of feeding these values of collaboration and community. Okay, so we quickly went through, if we just pause for a moment, we've talked about emotions, 27 you know, in total. Hopefully there was one in particular that, that you were able to lock on in terms of, yeah, that's something that, that has been bothering me right now. Um, we've gone through a, a quick journey of talking about how a few specific values may have changed, may have, may have become more important, may have become less important, maybe they're being tested. So my, my question to you, or I guess the next question from you actually, is what should you do? There's, there's four steps that uh, we have in terms of suggestions. Remember, it's this, it does begin with this state of awareness that we can create change. So here we go. Number one, let's talk about persistence. So we're gonna take you on a journey through our peak values. I know it's scary. I know it's, uh, it, uh, it's probably gonna get worse before it gets better but it will get better. We will get through this. So uh, my suggestion here in terms of persistence is really focusing your energy where you have control. I think the best advice I ever got was, was focusing on that, which you can control on, because if you try to focus on things you have no control over, it's only going to make you crazy. So as much as possible, stay positive, hang in there, be safe, but also um, you know, maintain your sanity at the same time. Practicing empathy. Practicing empathy, it's probably going to be the hardest of the four um, to really, because there's, there's a lot of stuff going on, there's a lot of people acting um, you know, differently than, than maybe ourselves, uh, and it's hard to understand. But I, I think, uh, again, of the four peak values, practicing empathy, taking perspective of others, really, th really thinking about, um, recognizing that what's triggering you may not be triggering others the same. In fact, it's probably not, uh, and vice versa. So really try to take the perspective of others, especially when it's, it, maybe it seems like they're being irrational or illogical, or, or you just don't understand. Take the time to try and understand, uh, and if nothing else, assume that they have good intentions, even if that's not um, how they are appearing on the surface. But again, probably harder said than done. Be authentic. This, this is the perfect time to self-reflect. Take some time, we talked about mindfulness earlier, take some time and be mindful. Um, tune in, check in with yourself, check in with others as well. But what I really want you to think about is don't be afraid to say, I need help. Don't be afraid to say, I'm not okay. Uh, and so be as authentic as you can be with, with what you're feeling. You know, it, is, it's, it starts with self-reflection. It continues with an understanding and clarity about what's most important. But then staying in tune with how you're feeling and, and not trying to sort of um, brush it over or sweep it under the carpet or say, oh, I'm fine, how about you? Like if, if you're not okay, say it, talk about it. Talk with, uh, and then do the same with others. Give others the space to, to say that they're not doing okay and that uh, um, that's actually normal. And then uh, finally, let's lead with kindness. Let's remember that uh, you know we're we're all in this together. So it will get better, but we're in the journey. We're on the journey together. So let's let's do it together. And that remember that being kind, even sometimes it might be a little bit hard, but being being kind is going to make the situation easier and more tolerable for all of us. I'll reiterate, you know, giving others the benefit of the doubt. Um, there's a great book that, that if you haven't read, this is a great time to, be, to, to read it. 
called the four agreements. And agreement number two is to never take anything that someone else says or does personally, because it's not, it's really not about you. It's about them. So if you can practice not taking things personally, but also remember to check in with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and making sure that they're okay as well. Okay, so now here's the question. I'm gonna have uh, Faustine unmute the phone, but actually what I want you to do first is two things. So uh, if you have a piece of paper, gra grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and I want you to do two things. First of all, I want you to write down a quote from Sir Francis Bacon that said uh, in the, in the 1960s, in the 1600s, a little earlier than 1960s, in the 1600s, Sir Francis Bacon said, knowledge is power. And no disrespect to Sir Francis Bacon, but there's something more powerful than, than knowledge. So I want you to cross out the word knowledge and write clarity. Clarity is power. So really the point of, of the discussion today is to get some clarity about emotions and how, and how values play into them. Hopefully you've gained some clarity about what you are feeling, why you're feeling it, my question to you, based on what you've learned today, what you've heard today, any new um, insight, any new clarity, uh, I want you to, the second thing I want you to do is to write down one thing that you will do as a result of, of this discussion. You know, it might be checking with somebody, it might be you know, taking someone else's, taking a different perspective on something that's been bothering you. One thing that you're going to do as a result. And the reason why I asked Faustine to unmute everybody is if, you, if anybody would like to share what they're going to do or if you have a question about um, what you're gonna do or what you should do, we can entertain a few questions. Yes, so if you would like to share, um, just type in share or your name in the Q&A and we can go ahead and unmute yourself. I do understand that some of you may not have microphones, so um, if you don't have a microphone, that's okay. Um, okay, so we have our first one. Um, Sarah, um, let's see. Um, do you have your microphone on live, Sarah? For some sort of reason, it's not letting me unmute you for some sort of reason. Um, why don't you just go ahead and type in um, some information we can share out loud. Or you can type it in the chat option so everyone can see it um, to share. Really, the important thing is that you have taken time to think about what you will do. Um, so it's not required that you share. But I, I definitely want to create a space for people to do that. So I see that Sarah's response is that her, well, her, her plan of action is that she's feeling very fortunate and want to fix, she wants to figure out how to give, give back in this time. And, and I, my interpretation, Sarah, is that you've, the currency you have lots of right now is time and you'd like to spend it uh, to help others. So good. Oh, I even nailed it, thank you. Does it anybody else wanna share or should we keep going? Okay, we will keep going. So I, so at this point then, I hope everybody has written at least one thing down. If you have more, that's great. My challenge to you is not only that you've, you've created a plan of action. So remember we said the, the formula for all of our discussions at the Peak Fleet is A, we wanna learn something, B, we wanna have a shared experience and leave with a common vocabulary, but three, we want a plan of action. So you, hopefully all of you are leaving with a plan of action. My question is, can you do it today? Or my challenge to you is, can you do that thing today?
I'm looking at the chats and I see another comment. I love this. Uh, need to figure out how to extend understanding and grace to my not to my now remote work team, sending them actual cards today. Fantastic. Yes. I love, I love that um, idea that again, okay, we're in this virtual world now. Even just checking in text, Zoom, instant messaging, checking in electronically would be fantastic. But I love the fact if, if I'm interpreting right that sending some kind of a physical card in the mail uh, would be really, really powerful. Great idea. I'm gonna keep going and, and there's, a, there's two or three more slides that I wanna cover just to give you more information. We've, we've already covered the content that we put together for the discussion, but I wanna offer two more resources. One, as I told you this started with with me in kind of a funk, uh, me being reflective, journaling, um, talking it through with my partner, Jen, and, uh, and then it evolved into a blog. The feedback we received from the blog, which was, is really the kind of the outline of the webinar today, uh, was so positive. People saying, thank you. I didn't, I didn't really understand why I was so grouchy or such a jerk until I read the blog. Uh, now I get it. We, we were inspired to keep the conversation going. You know, time is one of the currencies that, that we have right now as well. So Jen's idea was, hey, let's, uh, let's switch to video and let's, let's go through our deck. So that I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about our deck in a minute, but the, I mentioned there are hundreds of values. If you, if you Google a list of values, there's, there's lots of values. Um, in the deck of cards that, that we offer, that we use, there's 55 and so, we decided to go through the whole deck one value at a time and have a discussion about each value. What does it mean and, and what we might be feeling and how is it playing into the crisis that we're experiencing? So we started with, uh, Jen actually started with um, wisdom first. We, and we're working backwards alphabetically, wellness, wealth, trust. Um, we had our fifth episode launched today. And so we're gonna continue to release these three to four a week. So if you, if you found value in this discussion today and you want to keep the conversation going, follow us on um, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, search for the Peak Fleet. They're there. Um, we're going to be adding them to Instagram soon. But that's another resource for you. Again, if you found value today that you want to go a little bit deeper and, and spend a little more time into individual values, uh, that's available for you. And then the last thing I mentioned, there's a number of ways that you can identify your own core values, or if you've done a core values exercise and you feel like, yeah, it is time to revisit them. Um, we do have a deck of cards that we sell off of our website, www.thepeakfleet.com. We wanted to offer two things today. Uh, one for all of the, the awesome BBB members. Uh, if you enter coupon code BBB at checkout, we'll give you a $3 discount, which will almost cover shipping of the deck to you. Um, and then kind of special announcement today, we, we have, um, we, we felt like, you know, most of our clients are in the workspace. And so a lot of our, our discussion guides, our script, our facilitation tools are built for the workplace. And, but, but we know there's a lot of value in having this discussion with friends and family. So what we have drafted is a, eight to 10 page discussion guide that, or any order of multiple decks, if you will. So the idea is if you wanna have a discussion with your family or your friends, your loved ones, um, we are, we've created a family discussion guide and we're going to include it for free in all multi-deck orders through June 1st. Um, so a couple of opportunities, again, if you found value in today, here's an opportunity to continue the conversation. Um, for the person and for anybody who was talking about kind of working with their remote team, uh, we are also creating digital, vi virtual, online versions of the exercise. So you don't actually need to have the, the physical deck of cards. So if that's something that interests you, you can reach out to us. And this is how you do that. So uh, this is our website, www.thepeakfleet.com. You can find us uh, at The Peak Fleet on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. My Twitter handle's there. So this, uh, again, if you want to know more, um, feel free to email us at info at If you have questions, ideas, help needed. So speaking of questions, we have 20 minutes left. Uh, we can open it up to questions from the audience. Faustine, do you want to do that through the chat? Is that the best way to do it? 
Yeah, either um, through chat or if you want to type them in the Q&A, um, either or, whichever one you feel more comfortable in using. Um, we can share your questions and Brian can answer them for you. This would also be a good time for Jen, since I know she's, she's on, she's out there. There's probably a few things that I forgot to mention. So Jen, if there's anything. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, the one thing I would, was, well, I was going to add two things. One, I was going to say, um, one of my tips I've seen out there, which a lot of you are probably doing, is having a lot of fun with Zoom backgrounds with your teams um, and with people you're connecting with and with families, too. I know that our extended family has been doing Zoom calls and having backgrounds and then sort of theming it out, right? So, like, if you want to put up a background with, you know, Disneyland on there and wear your Mickey Mouse ears, you know, something like that, super fun. Um, but also back to talking about the cards, um, reach out to us. Um, I'm jen.coin at the Peak Fleet if you want to contact me directly or info at the Peak Fleet works as well. Um, we have a, we've been piloting um, the digital version of our cards, um, which is a great alternative. But we are fulfilling, um, we are fulfilling decks here and, you know, have a, a COVID free environment right now. So we've been quarantined for a couple of weeks, um, but uh, can fulfill those decks. So um, please reach out to us. So we do have one question that just came in. Um, how do you recommend we connect with our teams remotely and serve their values? It seems hard not being in person serve their value. So I, um, there is a way, uh, like Jen just mentioned, we, there are ways of, uh, so I'm going to answer a couple different ways because I'm not sure I totally understand. There's a way to facilitate the process of, of clarifying your core values remotely. And that's, um, that's something that we're, uh, we can help you with, give you some suggestions. Um, in terms of serving, um, one interpretation of that is if you, if you already know the values of your team members, and you would like to make sure that you are kind of serving or fulfilling or making sure that there's, that they're, that you're kind of um, filling their cup, so to speak, in terms of what's important to them. I mean, I, I think you can do that remotely over the phone or via technology, but I guess it, it depends on exactly what we mean by the word serve. The other thing I will add is I've been participating in a um, community group where we're doing daily check-ins, right? So just having that daily consistency to check in, if you understand what people's values are, you know, just asking people where they're feeling um, concerned about, you know, let's say security is someone's value, like how, how is that making them feel? What, how could I help, right? I always start with how do I help? Um, and, you know, people like one of my values also is a sense of adventure. And so I'm going, you know, I can go kind of bonkers being at home, not being able to go out and do new and exciting things out in the world. And um, so once you know those person's values, maybe it's um, everybody rallies around trying to come up with suggestions of how to, you know, innovate your life while you're still operating at home. So I think I think it's just creating the conversation um, and having, you know, authenticity and just a, a sense of empathy and perspective taking and just reaching out with people to understand what their challenges are. Another example, actually using uh, Jen's values. Uh, one of my values is independence. And so sometimes I can get very kind of, um, I, I can just disappear for, for hours or days on end but I know that collaboration is one of Jen's values. And so, you know, in times like this, uh, that uh, reaching out and saying, hey, uh, I could use your input on this, this webinar, this presentation, this, hey, what do you think about this? So knowing, knowing that there's a desire uh, and it's important to collaborate is something that I just, because of my own bias, I need to remember sometimes. To, to check in and activate Jen in that area because it's uh, it'll help both of us. Um, so the person um, followed up stating 
yes, filling their cup, I feel so limited as to how I can help or lead them when we are all remote. You know, one of the things that I love is leading with vulnerability, right? If you guys, you know, high, highly recommend Brene Brown and her resources as well. And I feel like if you express that vulnerability of how it's challenging you at this time, it really encourages people to open up and share. Um, I think a lot of us feel like we have to be strong and, um, you know, keep that good game face on for work and not express the, the, the things that are real concerns and just sharing, you know, something, it doesn't have to be a TMI too much information situation, but just saying like, hey, you know, uh, I'm really worried about, you know, my, my grandfather right now or my, my father, or I'm really worried about um, being able to pay my bills if, you know, we're working at reduced hours or something, you know, just being vulnerable and then being empathetic to what you hear in response. I haven't, now that you clarified um, anonymous attendee, here's something else. So, so if you don't know their values, there's, there are three things that I think all employees, all team members uh, need in order to stay engaged. Uh, one is a sense of purpose. So, so if nothing else, reaching out, talking to them and making sure that we're connecting the dots on why we're doing what we're doing. So staying, you know, staying clear on the overall, the higher purpose of what we're doing. Um, most importantly is number two, I think, is connection. So people, people need a sense of purpose, people need a sense of connection, connection to their coworkers, connection to their, to their boss. Um, and so just knowing that you're there, knowing that you care, knowing that you're concerned about them, checking in, that's going to, to fill their cup a little bit or maybe a lot. And then the third, the third ingredient, so purpose number one, connection number two, three is clarity of success. What is, what is winning? What does winning look like? What is success? And that's, that's a metric that, that's probably changing right now. So we may be, or, you know, what success is or what, what the goal is right now might be a little bit different. So, so checking in and making sure that's clear with them. So again, clarity of purpose, a sense of connection, clarity of success. If you, if you check in uh, on each one of those three things with every single team member, I guarantee their cups will be at least half full. Um, so here's a question about um family, um, do we shape our children's values or are they developed individually with the events that happen in their lives? That's a good question. Jen, do you want to take it or do you want me to take a stab at it? Take a stab at it. <laughs> um, let's see, do we, it's a two, two part question. So I, um, where do you value? Values, I think Duke, they, it's, a, it's a matter of our, it's a mix. I, I, this is probably going to sound like a cop out, but I think it's we absolutely inherit a sense of what's important from, from our parents and our upbringing. Um, but I think also that you know, what, what we experience absolutely shapes it as well. So this, I think this will be, um, you know, just like the silent generation um, before the boomers, um, you know, living through the great depression, uh, frugality and security and safety. There were a lot of things that, uh, that really kind of shaped a whole generation. Um, so, yeah, the things that we go through absolutely um, play into it as well. I don't know if, um, I, the part of the question that made me wonder is, uh, I, one of my beliefs about values is that there isn't a right or wrong, that it's, it's about you personally. So I, I think it's really important to create a space for every person to feel completely accepted for what's important to them. Um, regardless of what society maybe says is what the, you know, should be important. So, so it, I think what's most important is letting your children um, to kind of discover and figure out what is most important to them and, and really create a space where they can feel embraced and accepted for that versus trying to be very careful about sort of imparting on what the right values are. In general, I, I think that's a recipe for disaster. And I don't think that was implied in the question, but I thought it'd be good to, to state. Um, the, uh, the other thing I'll kind of follow up with that on is, um, you know, I, 
obviously Brian and I both believe in this exercise, you know, tremendously, but on a very personal level for me, um, I've been doing a lot of examination over the past, you know, nine months actually in digging deeper into my values and you know, what I've found is that what has re what I've been reinforced with my entire life growing up as a child, as well as my experience in um, the work environment um, kind of led me to think that certain things like resilience and growth were absolutely core to me at the, you know, the top. And I've been re-examining that lately and saying like, if the slate were more clean, what really matters to me? How do I wanna live my life and behave? And so um, there's so many layers to this that has been on a personal level, so impactful for me to sort of peel that onion back. And then thinking about that in the context of shaping children's lives and things like that is to, to Brian's point, allowing that freedom um, to be their authentic selves. Um, I can do a plug also for my, I have a, a radio show where we talk a lot about this stuff called Authenticity Matters. Um, it is online um, through our website. Also, you can find it on the top line of our page. Um, also, if you're in the Portland area, it's over the air. So um, we talk about a lot of these things. And if you have an interesting story, I'd love to interview you. So. Um, that was kind of just an extra little nugget. Based on what you said, and this was another question that's popped up, uh, the, so you said you've been going through a lot of self-examination. Um, you've, you've done the values exercise yourself multiple times. You've done it with, with many you know, hundreds of people. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you, you do it once and you're done or you do it once and you got it all figured out? Or how, how do you think that? I, I think that doing it multiple times is is really helpful actually um, to see if you know almost like doing it blindly to see if you come up with the same thing but also um, you know taking the time to do it deeper I think when you do it the first time I ever did it was with a team you know at that high-tech company we talked about many moons ago and doing it then, you know, it's like, oh, it's a team building exercise. I want to share something about myself. Um, but coming back to that and saying, really, how, how does that, how does that go with how I, I behave? Do I really consistently demonstrate this value? You really can dig deeper. And then I think it's worth examining going through um, a list of values again and seeing if, if really maybe things are aspirational and not really so core to what, how you behave. The other um, little tip I'll say, I got this actually, I'll give some credit to this uh, little group that I've been going to, that we've been talking and, and we ended up having a discussion about values. Someone said one fun thing they're doing at this time is they're writing a value down on a piece of paper um, and putting them on the floor and then actually walking over and standing physically on the value and thinking, how, how do I embody this value? And so it's kind of like a, a fun interactive thing you could do yourself or with your family members while you're locked down. Great, so we have time for one more question. Um, if anyone else has any more questions um, or a question, please type them in the chat option or the Q&A. Um, once again, this webinar is recorded, so it'll be posted on um, events.bvcommunity.org. So we'll just do a final sweep, see if anyone has any last minute questions to ask either Brian or Jen. Here's a question. Um, do you have tips for remote team building? That's a great question. We do. Jen, do you wanna go first on this one? Virtually, of course, she um, concludes. <laughs> um, I don't know, Brian, if you if you had something coming up the top of your mind that you thought I was going to talk about, but I'm I'm thinking about it. Well, I think almost anything you can do in person, you can figure out a way to do uh, virtually. The um, you know, so there's when it comes to team builders, sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on doing something. 
uh, big and evolved, involved, I'm sorry. Uh, and I, th I think what happens if that's your, your mindset of a, of a team builder is that we don't do it enough. And I think trust and, you know, which is the result of being vulnerable in a team building activity is something that's like working out that if you do it, if you go to the gym once a month and work out for two hours, you're going to be really sore and not stronger. So I, I like, so I guess the first thing I would say is think about doing a mix. Um, every time you have a meeting online, you could still do some kind of really quick factoid. Um, you know, like have everybody go around and share a favorite, a favorite song, a favorite band, a favorite um, recipe or a favorite vacation. So just some kind of personal factoid, another really simple. So these are things that you can, you can have everybody participate in and it will only take a couple of minutes out of your meeting. Um, another fun one is if you had $10,000 to spend and you had to spend it in 24 hours, what would you spend it on? Um, so some kind of personal information. What was the last book that you read? Now, when it comes to something more involved, you know, we, we've obviously talked a lot about doing the core values exercise. You can, you can still do things like your Myers-Briggs um, profile. You can do StrengthsFinder. You could do a DISC survey. Um, you can do Enneagram and you can share the results virtually. So there's, I don't think that the fact that we're all remote you know, gets in the way of, of doing that. Because in all cases, it starts with a, gaining some insider clarity about yourself and then being vulnerable with your teammates and sharing that and then gaining you know, as a result. Um, you know, so there are some of the more advanced things that we like to do probably are better suited for in-person facilitation. But even then, we could probably figure it out. But I think there's just a lot of things you could do um, virtually that, you know, we normally do in person. Well, and I would say, you know, one thing I've been loving is, you know, watching late night TV and how they've adapted to still doing their shows with their families at home and sharing that with the world. And I think the videos that we've been doing, one of the additional benefits aside from, you know, we want to give back and share some thoughts and messages out there to the world is it's actually strengthened our fleet quite a bit because it's been so collaborative um, going back and forth in having ideas about what videos we should do and, and how that should come about and who wants to sign up for what. So thinking about a little project, you know, that you can accomplish where you can do that asynchronously, do it online, um, you know, set aside time to have that conversation, um, you know, and, and maybe even do something that benefits, um, you know, some other industry or place where people are struggling at this time. And thanks to everyone for the comments and questions. I, it's been a great experience and I really appreciate your participation today. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thank you so much, um, Brian and Jen, for taking time out of your busy day to um, present to us some great tips, um, just how to deal with the COVID-19 and the crisis that we're going through and just how values are so important to go back on to help us get through this. Um, once again, um, thank you everyone for attending. This will be posted on events.bbcommunity.org. Um, I hope to see you at tomorrow's webinar. Um, so you can register for that on our same website. Um, but thank you everyone for attending. Um, please take care of yourself. Thank you.